2023 at 2 p.m. This is a meeting of the Public Art Committee. We are in the second floor media room at City Hall, and it is 2 p.m. Uh, Megan, can you do the roll? Mr. Toth. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Ms. Christopoulos. Here. Ms. McGrath. Here. Chair Jennings. Here. Mr. Sackhouse has an excused absence, and Don Arbitello has an unexcused absence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we just had another guest. Okay. We have uh, three guests with us today. Um, uh, Jane Dinoff, Katie Taylor, and Stephen Oliver. Okay. Um, did everybody have a chance to read the minutes of the April 12th meeting? Yes. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Second, Viva. Is there any discussion, comments, corrections? That looks good. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor of uh, approving the April 12th meeting minutes as submitted, say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, old business, current project updates, the Black Heritage Project. Um, the uh, Board of Commissioners on, not this meeting, but the last meeting, approved the, um, the uh, location of the project on the north end of the parking lot in the Tarpon Springs Marina. Okay. Uh, Diane, you have some uh, something for us for the Riverside Field mural project? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So, yes. Um, so we put the, the new revised call to artists out, and um, it's been distributed. And uh, I did receive one application. I told them that, you know, uh, it was going to be, uh, they were going to be seen at the June 14th meeting. So they understood that. And then I have two other artists that are interested in putting together a proposal, but since they have a longer time frame, they're taking mm -hmm. their time a little okay. bit more. So, but yes, okay. now we possibly will have three proposals. Excellent. For Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I, I think you indicated one had questioned the, the, uh, the fees, and you explained to them about yes. the insurance. Um, one of the artists is, um, does a lot of larger projects, and I explained the threshold of $1,000 um, being you know, what we can do, uh, and also that it would be under, they, the artist would be under the city uh, insurance policy. However, if anything was over $1,000, they would have to carry their own insurance. And she said that she uh, has her own insurance and that's not a problem. So I told her that if she had any other ideas and wanted to do the whole building or whatever she wanted to propose as far as fees go to the, um, the committee that, um, you know, just to put that, include that in her proposal. Right. She Great. understood. Okay, thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Mm -hmm. Megan, do you want to do the um, <coughs> budget updates? And thank you in advance for, you know, sending them out to us. You're welcome. Very at this, helpful. At this time, there are no current project updates. Um, the current balance as of yesterday, <laughs> May 9th, is $181,134. It's just a small change interest only. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the CRA mural project, I was hoping to get an application from Catalina's, the Mexican restaurant, uh, but I guess they, they missed the deadline. I did speak to them because they had indicated to me a while ago that they wanted to, uh, you know, do a, do a mural and uh, put in an application. Uh, maybe they'll have it for the June meeting. Um, just another item of old business. Uh, we did get down to the docks finally and take a picture of the, uh, the mayor and the members of the committee with uh, Joy Sackelson, you know, at the Pelican and uh, Cat Sculptures. And uh, Diane posted, posted it on Tarpon Arts. Okay, new business. Uh, St. Kate Art, uh, if you look in your backup, you will see that they submitted a proposal. Um, 
And please note that the 393.75 is the quarterly assessment. So that's what they would charge to come and check out the Naiads, Storytime, and the Alma Mermaid in Craig Park. This doesn't, um, you know, include any work. Uh, we've used St. Kate's for a number of years, and you know their work is, you know, quite good. And the way they explained it to me is that, you know, they have to come out and see what condition the current, you know, statues are in at the mm -hmm. time and decide, like, how much or how little um, maintenance they need. So right. that was why they don't, you know, quote right off the bat. They will give us a more formal quote of costs um, after they inspect the, um, the, each statue if you approve, you know, this fee. Right. Obviously, these are just the three... Uh, bronze statues that we have. Does anybody have any questions about the maintenance? So they have to be assessed quarterly? No, annually. Annually, oh, because it says, okay. Oh, so this, this is, is a quarterly annual. assessment. This is a, annual, yeah. Oh, this 393 is right. annual. Okay, yeah, we do it once out, a year. Oh, right. once a year to come out and see what it needs. Right. And all. Yeah, sometimes okay. they don't need anything, sometimes they right. need a thorough sure. overhaul, like myself. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I think initially, so, right. yeah, initially then, uh, they. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, I'm do sorry. they do? Uh, they do the work themselves. There's a company. They also do right. The, they do, do the, they work. Perform yeah, the work. Yeah, they're they've got quite a bit of expertise okay. in in this field. I know they know uh, Robert Stackhouse quite well. He's he's worked with them oh, on a okay. number of occasions for you know different kinds of outdoor art restorations and maintenance. Oh, that's great. Okay. So, I know they did uh, uh, a really thorough one on Alma. What, about two or three years ago, because she was yeah she was, she was in, in bad shape. shape. BB, you have any? No, I was just confused about the quarterly. If we were paying this quarterly or monthly, yeah. so, but it's mm -hmm. annually. Yeah, I guess that was just the. Initially, <clears throat> when we first contacted them, they suggested a quarterly, of course, you know. But we all, I think, the public art committee at the time felt like, um, you know, that wasn't necessary. Really, an annual check would be sufficient, which. Um, you know, so I just, he has not has I'll ask him to change the um, yeah, just so that it's moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Saying quarterly when you mean annually is very confusing. Yes. Right. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to entertain a motion to um, approve the annual assessment by St. Kate's. Um, I move we approve it, provided that the invoices are corrected to say annual rather than quarterly. Okay. So, do I have, have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Them. Nick? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, and we do have a budget in our you know, budget line uh, for uh, maintenance and repair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> virtual tour guide and QR codes. Um, I know we had talked a while ago about doing, you know, a uh, virtual tour guide that incorporates QR codes. Um, that's under new business on your agenda. This is you run the minutes. Yeah, go back. Oh. <laughs> first page. Oh, first page. That you were. There it is. There you go. Ah. <laughs> okay, and. Um, this is something that could very easily be done. I'd be willing to take it on. Uh, I know that the creation of QR codes, there did there was a question about them that, you know, uh, about the city. So I think one of the issues we're going to have to discuss further is how and where the uh, QR codes will be applied. You well, know, there, to create there a walking tour. is a walking tour. <coughs> you know. So right. I don't think we need to create a new one. There, the Humanities Council did fund the creation. There, we do have a, okay. a walking tour. I think what needs to be done is that it needs to be more visible and maybe, you know, something or the codes created or something created to put in the places because it's already, we already have one. Okay. Beba, would you yeah. uh, coordinate with them and get the details of mm -hmm. their walking tour and see if we can yeah, it's on the, uh, partner with them or? Yeah, it's on the um, Florida, uh, okay. Florida Stories app. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that was a... Uh, <clears throat> that was a specific area uh, yeah. walking tour, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. It's been mistaken. a while since I've looked at it. Well, so. that yeah. walking tour, the, the one the Florida Humanities Council made, it's for all of Tarpon Springs. However, it does include the Sponge Docks area mm -hmm. and on. 
And so I, I saw, you know, I, mm -hmm. I recall that when I saw this in the thing, I was just wondering so you right. don't repeat, you know, or right. duplicate mm -hmm. the thing, but rather maybe it, so. coordinate with it to perhaps, um, you know, something at each uh, designation on the tour. There's something that says, you know, lets them know that this is. Mm -hmm. Which that was also created. I just don't know what happened to all of that. Um, mm. As far as where every, they're in all the places, I mean, we're right. still giving them out. You okay, know, the, so you, the you rat have cards. that information, mm -hmm. right? The, so uh, the rat, but do the rat cards have like a QR code on it to go to the app? Uh, yes, uh, sure, okay. it, it does. But like I said, it's only for those specific, right? You know, points of interest, you know, right. kind of thing. Okay, so, so so I think we should assess that first, right? I'm, before we, I'm volunteering you. You're volunteering me. Yes. Oh, nothing is going to happen <laughs> until after I get back. <laughs> That's because fine, but I have to get my son graduated next week. I have clergy lady uh, until June, and then okay. <laughs> All right, but it's you know we we really just need to coordinate and know what's yeah. going on elsewhere in town so that we don't reinvent the wheel. Well, that's what yeah, that's that's what you I was know. Trying so to say. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's important that you know. Uh, well, like this year, you know, this was the first time we added the, the numbers to the uh, art box submissions, mm -hmm. which I think makes makes a big difference for people looking to identify the art and the artists. What is the intention of this? Is it for specifically for a public art um, tour, or is it just cultural Question. areas and things like that? Because well, I mean, if you wanted to do one for just specifically for public art, mm -hmm. that's doable to do in a print form as well as in um, a digital, you know, downloadable map with QR codes to the different areas using the G GIS map that the right. city has. So, right. Um, well, that, you know, I, I guess that's a good question. What is, you know, yeah, what, what I, are we I think, to yeah, highlight? part of the problem is that a lot of this stuff is getting overlaid with each other. You know, uh, if there if there's a, a walking tour that already exists, and I know that I think there's somebody on the docks that has a little kiosk or something for guided tours. Yeah, probably. So I think we have to kind of find out what's out there and see, you know, how we can, you know, incorporate it. Maybe specifically add public art, you know, pieces to it. Um, there are a number of um, reasons why you might want to use something like QR codes, even though they're not free, and we can talk about that in a minute too, um, is that, say, for instance, a tourist is walking past the mermaid statue, and if it has um, somewhere on it a QR code that they can scan, and it gives them access to the app, which leads them to all the other places, instead of standing in front of it and saying, gosh, that's nice, I wonder if there's anything else like that around, um, and, and having no idea, then they would have a way to get access to that information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm thinking as well, in particular, when the, um, the Black Heritage Project is complete, then um, we would be able to use the same application, the same techniques to lead people from the Union Academy to the docks and from the docks back to the Union mm -hmm. Academy. Um, via perhaps, um, you know, the other places that are of interest along the way. And, and, you know, that's, I think that any way that we can assist um, visitors to our city to find these places of beauty mm -hmm. um, is worth doing. Yeah. However, we explored this months and months ago when we first started talking about QR codes for the eliminated art boxes. Mm -hmm. One of the things that our IT department said is that you have to be careful with QR codes because if it's something that's down low or something, somebody can just, you know, can alter yeah, it and everything it, yeah. and, you know, send you to a non-desirable site. So it has, it's most, you know, most desirable to be in something that is printed that is not, that cannot be altered or else um, something that is digital that is, or something that's up high that, but then if it's up high, People can't scan it, you right. know, as readily. So, you know, that that's another consideration. Um, well, yes, um, and I'm sure that the IT department has a legitimate concern there. Um, if, but, you know, so many other cities do this, um, so many other places do it. There are QR codes everywhere. Um, I don't know that it's really a huge problem. How would you do that on a piece of art, though? Can you can you research that and find out what a safe way would be possibly? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, yeah. perhaps a, you know a plaque, tasteful plaque next to the art. Um, I was just thinking a piece of plexiglass over mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. with you know the QR codes underneath the plexiglass, perhaps. Uh, yeah, or even you know, printed on on the plexi. And that part, or even mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm just thinking yeah. you know as far as somebody it's like putting a sticker directly on, plexi, on a, a, a different yeah. QR code. Sure. You know, well, they, at that point the you know they may. Somebody clever enough yeah. to stick it on top of the plexiglass, but I mean, it's that can be it's prepared. up to you to yeah. see, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. what exactly. I mean, but with plexiglass, you can print it on one side and look through it from the other and not be able to deface it um, without being able to easily wipe it off from the side right. that's not printed. In fact, um, all of the art boxes, you know, the, the images are printed on the back. Oh. Yeah, okay. So. Um, yeah, so I'm sure there's lots of ways I'll certainly look into it. Um, but either way, um, because it would be city owned, the city would have to have a license to produce QR codes and that does cost money. Um, I don't know whether we already have one or not. Um, they're not free. Well, the, I don't, the software I don't. that you use to make them isn't free. We put we them on our on brochures all the time. Yeah. And you ask? You can make them on Canva if you have a Canva account. You can make mm -hmm. them no, they're, they're <coughs> automatically generated. We, could, uh, we do it on our brochures all the time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, but if you all could maybe do some research on, you know, different ways that we could do it for art projects, that would be sure. helpful. So, so just to re-clarify, are we looking at just the public art aspect, since we sort of have a cultural one already uh, in place? Are we looking at, um, you know, enhancing the visibility of the existing and adding a different one, just so I kind of understand where we're... I, I think we need. I this. think we need to find out what's there, what's already yeah. done. Okay. I think all of the above. <clears throat> right. Okay. You know, maybe we can mm -hmm. piggyback onto what's already there. Maybe we have to do something completely different. Maybe they don't want to talk to us because we're Top and Springs, and there's something else. You know, I mean, who knows? Well, if you Until just download we talk the Florida to, Stories app, you'll find yeah. it. Yeah, but, but I mean, you, look you know, it. right? Yeah. But they might, mm -hmm. they might have a mission or some kind of, yeah. uh, you know, specific uh, topic or. or, or, or you know, approach that they're, yeah. they, they might be more history oriented than art. Yeah, um, so, until until we talk to them, we won't know, so. Yeah, yeah. we have to find out more about, uh, you know, the existing, uh, the existing okay. tours that are out there, but we definitely need something. Okay. Um, so can I ask, uh, you still have a bunch of Diana the brochures for that, Yes, right? in fact, the, the chamber gives them out, the visitor center at the um, sponge docks. Maybe we, make a note for the next meeting sure, to Brian. have some here so sure. that we can all look at them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Going to be in Greece. At the next meeting, no. Oh, okay. July meeting. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll be here in June. Okay. Not in New Orleans. Good. Not gonna <laughs> uh, Diane, do you want to uh, take the next one, the workshop? Oh, yes. Um, uh, right now, um, we are in highly in budget season right now, and um, also the Board of Commissioners are having a lot of their own workshops and things, so um, I talked to Mark and he said that he doesn't see how we could do, uh, you know, a video and recorded one like in here because it's actually just so deeply uh, down the road. But he said that possibly we could do something in the conference room uh, here on the second floor, which is on the other side of the building and we would just uh, go ahead and record it with our tape recorders, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't be, you know, videoed, kind of like, or right. be in this. So, um, you know, so basically, you know, it's up to you all, depending on your schedules and everything, to maybe just give me a couple of uh, dates, you know, that you feel like that would, would work for you, and I'll, I'll try to set it up. Okay, or you, could you check out the availability of that conference room and throw some dates out yeah, to us? I sure. think that might be that might be sure. easier. Okay. And did, do we have we kind of decided what the contents of the workshop is going to be? Well, I think one of the things we were we're talking about was to get uh, discuss getting a consultant, okay. right? A public mm -hmm. art consultant, and <clears throat> you know, I'm yeah. I'm sure that you know. Everybody has some questions. You know, right now we've got nothing in the hopper. Right. So uh, this is kind of an unusual situation for us. So I think we need to, uh, you know, uh, maybe look around at uh, what other communities are doing, you know, both locally and nationally, and see if there's anything that, 
you know, can be adapted or utilized for, you know, Tarpon Springs. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen a lot of things, too, that are, you know, uh, involve, you know, multi-story buildings, which obviously wouldn't work around here. So. We don't have any. <laughs> for, fortunately. Yeah, Graham? Um, yeah. Um, the, um, if I can attempt to answer the question as well, the uh, workshop format allows us to discuss things in ways that cannot be discussed in the formal um, mm -hmm. PAC okay. meetings. Um, we can brainstorm things in, in there that we can't do in here. Mm -hmm. um, we can ask specific um, contributions from people outside of the Public Art Committee. Okay. Um, we can you know, look at all kinds of different things and we're not so constrained as we are by the structure of these meetings. Okay. I think that's definitely, you know, mm -hmm. beneficial. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know yes. if we had a specific agenda of things that we were going to. I think the last meeting we talked about for. revising the ma master plan and taking mm -hmm. a look at that. Too. Okay, master right. plan. Yeah. Right. Sorry, my, my brain is a little. I don't remember everything. All right. <laughs> okay. Overload right now. Right. Okay. Uh, staff comments. Um, I will just say that um, the. Heritage Museum renovations are coming along really well. The lighting is being completed today. The carpeting, the new carpeting is going in starting on Monday. Um, they're going to start working on that. So I'm hoping by the end of May or, or you know, maybe mid-June that I'll be able to bring you all over there to see, you know, all the, the new updates and everything. Of course, all the exhibits won't be put back, you know, completely. Um, but uh, it's really looking good, and I'm so grateful that we have, you know, this renovation because it was very, very tired. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's going to just enhance both sides, you know. They put in new lighting <clears throat> in the Greek history wing and, um, you know, and, all, and it's just beautiful. It really looks good, all the updated, you know, things. We're no longer in the 1970s. <laughs> 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 so it's really nice, yeah, but good. that's all I got. Good. Okay, committee comments. Nick, do you have anything? Um, well, first, I, I'm sorry that I missed the meeting last right. <laughs> <laughs> last month and all. It was unavoidable. I uh, had a little uh, tummy ache and all, but it was an important meeting. And, uh, you know, I, I know you all talked about moving uh, uh, Stevens uh, a piece from where the original place, which I guess is the called the north end location, and putting it on the, uh, the the sponge docks and all, and I heard about it from sponge divers and all <laughs> <laughs> that uh, you know that it's a working waterfront and uh, you know kind of kills me. It, it, his piece deserves a, a very prominent place. Um, you know, I'm part of the, uh, the 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 community down there and from the sponge diving world uh, mm -hmm. and all. We've been the family's been in the sponge diving business for over a hundred years. You know. And so the story, you know, that Stephen's telling, you know, is one that's long past due that needs to be told. And, I, you know, I feel it really needs a, a prominent uh, mm -hmm. uh, place. Um, you know, the, 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 the waterfront side, you know, it's just uh, the guys have a tough enough time uh, getting around there. You know, uh, you know, the sponge diver statue's in the middle, so the boats that are on the north side of that statue have to you know drive onto the uh, the sponge docks one way then the mm -hmm. guys have to drive the other guys south have to drive mm -hmm. from the other side and it's you know has these uh, you know the with the planters that are there and you know, already with these huge palm trees in them it's, it's just getting so congested that i felt you know the the best place you know if, if i could be the decider it would be. Well, it's already a, been decided. Yeah, so. yeah, it would be. A, it would be across the street. You know, uh, in front of the sponge exchange. When you're facing the exchange to the right, where the you know it's a high wall there, and, and all. And it's you know it, to me it wouldn't be an impediment, but it would be a high traffic area, to where more people would be exposed to the uh, store. But I understand at the last meeting they decided to put it back at the. At the, the at north the, end of the marina. At the uh, north end of the um, the marina. Uh, so, you know, uh, you know, I mean, that's great. And uh, I don't know. I guess maybe you can expand the footprint now since it's going back there. But then again, you're the one that has to do all the 
of <laughs> expanding and contracting on your piece and all, and you know, it's work and stuff. I understand that, but I just wanted to say how you know I think it's important, and uh, you know, I just wanted to see it in a a really prominent spot. Now, maybe ancillary to that discussion, you know, that uh, the city ha is doing a, a, let's see, what is it called? A Greek Town Traditional Cultural Property <coughs> Preservation and Place Making Evaluation, mm -hmm. <coughs> which, you know, it's a company, Stantec uh, is the company that the city selected and budgeted. And so they're going to be, you know, uh, doing this, uh, you know, evalu planning and stuff. And uh, I guess what they can do to create planning strategies for preservation and placemaking and all. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, you know, as far as uh, us getting, you know, on some of the projects, getting ahead of ourselves, you know, to wait and see what they come up with and what's in the thing and how we can uh, <coughs> coordinate, you know, with that right. uh, plan and all. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to make the comment that I wish I had been here the last meeting, you know, and uh, and all just so I could have pointed out the fact, you know, that it's a working waterfront and that you're mm -hmm. going to get a lot of pushback from the, the from the from the guys that are working there, you mm -hmm. know, and it's only because, you know, anything, you know, anything there and everything there, you know, kind of is an impediment to them. And, you know, they're they're barely hanging on trying to, you know, trying to make a living and stuff and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and it's already hard, dangerous work. And so everything, you know, we do, you know, kind of uh, just makes one more uh, little bump in the road for them that they have to, you know, mm -hmm. get across. So anyway, I just wanted to, you know, uh, that was my uh, comment. You know, I kind of look forward to, uh, you know, seeing the completed <laughs> piece soon and stuff, as I'm sure Stephen is. But I just... <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to put my two cents in. Okay. <laughs> Steva? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, as far as the waterfront, I would like to see us remove things and not add any more things because it's <laughs> getting, it's just way too cluttered. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I mean, I wasn't able to go to the last VOC meeting, but it, they, I guess, made their decision. Um, but I'm happy to see it go move forward. Mm hmm at this point, you know, because I know you've been working constantly, and like, let's just get it, <laughs> let's get it somewhere, um, because it is, it is an important piece. Um, uh, as far as all the other things are concerned, I mean, yeah, I just think, uh, I agree with Nick, um, also being a community member down there, um, that holding off on any new projects for now is the best idea. Mm -hmm. until we have more of a, a vision and can maybe start cleaning some things up um, down there. So I would like to see a, a kind of a halt put on anything else at the sponge docks uh, until uh, all those assessments are made. Right. Um, and we still have the rest of the city to play in, though. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah, I don't want to put things I totally... Halt, I didn't say a halt on everything. Yeah, right. I said a halt on anything down there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I was pretty specific. Because right. <laughs> so. everything takes forever. Yeah, <laughs> so. no, no, I'm just saying for specifically for, mm -hmm. on, you know, the sponge docks, I think we need to press pause uh, for right, right now. Sonia, do you have any comments? No, I kind of, I agree with what Nick and Eleni are saying. Mm -hmm. um, and also when it comes to the sponge docks, I mean, it feels like we should... Be, we should be working together. Right, yeah, I, I really want to be aware of, you know, what that committee's working yes. on. I, I think it, it got Right now they kind just of put a survey out. Right, I yeah. think... So uh, this is just the very beginning of it, and, uh, right. you know, mm -hmm. it probably right. won't be completed towards the fall, I imagine. Yeah. I don't think it's going to start really or until the, the fall. fall. Okay. Because, right, uh, yeah, I think, you know, the whole idea is I think our committee should be kept in the loop. That's mm -hmm. basically... Sure. You know, so we don't step on anybody's toes. Graham, you? Yeah. Yeah, I have a couple of things to say. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the, the, the Black History Project, as it was originally conceived, in, in my mind anyway, is supposed to be a celebration, um, supposed to be a, a really celebratory piece of work, something that stands out, something that um, grabs your attention, and, um, uh, and is... And <clears throat> And the pieces that Stephen designed and gave to us in his 
um, in his proposal, well, his, his design work, um, I thought were particularly wonderful when he brought in those models as well and, um, and did the, the paintings and showed us the slideshow and all the rest of it. Um, and we all agreed with that and there was a unanimous agreement from the Public Art Committee followed by a unanimous agreement from the Board of Commissioners. Um, I thought we had it nailed then. And, um, and, and I must admit that I am disappointed and a little frustrated that there has been um, this uproar uh, with trying to make it smaller, trying to put it into different places, trying to make it less significant. I think it's, as I said, it should be a celebratory piece, not an apology. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's important work and mm -hmm. And it's to my, you know, to, I, th I think it's a signature piece for the Public Art Committee. I think it's a signature piece for the um, uh, the, the entire community of Tarpon Springs, and and it should be honoured by putting so, putting it somewhere where it's visible, somewhere where it's um, clearly belonging to us, um, to us all, and um, you know, right out there in front of the visitor centre where it was originally placed is, to my mind, a great place to put it. I understand all the arguments about the working waterfront. I'm not talking about putting it down there. I never was. Um, I think that um, sticking it front and center um, up by the uh, visitor center is a great place for it, um, as is the one down at the, um, the Union Academy. That's perfect right there. Um, the, the corral is, is going to be wonderful. It's going to be a great addition to our city. Um, meanwhile, um, anybody that wants to talk about Greek Town should go on to Connect Tarpon and, um, and do the survey mm -hmm. um, and, and have at it and make your comments. Yep. Um. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is that, you know, when this project was, was originally uh, put into uh, the selection panel, you know, the, the two areas that it was indicated going were the Union Academy neighborhood and the sponge docks in the vicinity of the uh, visitor center. Um, we got 14 applications and all of them were designed with those locations in mind. And um, <coughs> Stevens was rather unusual because of all of the um, applications that we got, uh, his was kind of the largest and, you know, the most expansive and incorporated a lot of information, images, maps, and a lot of historical images. Mm -hmm. So it's, it was, you know, created to be a piece where people could look at it and learn from it. It's educational as well as artistic. And it really needs a space where people can take the time to give it the credit it deserves. Mm -hmm. It doesn't belong on a sidewalk. It's not a statue that's just sitting there. It's a statement piece. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the design is wonderful. I personally know how much work Stephen has put into it in terms of doing research, talking to people in Tarpon Springs, and you know, spending time, you know, I found out that he has a connection to Tarpon Springs. So, you know, all of this has kind of come together. And, you know, the bottom line is that the project was vetted. It went through, it's been in the popper for three years. This is not a project that was taken lightly. The uh, selection panel that was put in place to uh, vet all of the applications, had a good cross-section of people from the community. And unfortunately, two of the people that were on the committee have since passed, Dudley and Annie Dabbs. So, um, you know, that's how long this has been going on. And, um, you know, it was brought to the Board of Commissioners, it was approved, a contract was written with Stephen, so it's a, and in my estimation, it's kind of a done deal. If anything, 
you know, is to be done, altering anything, it's going to have to go back before the Board of Commissioners and po possibly involve a renegotiation of the contract or a, uh, a you know, uh, a reimagination of, of the whole thing, which I don't want because I love it the way it is. Okay? Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's my two cents. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have uh, public comments. Katie? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for letting me speak. Oh, no. I appreciate all your input on the spongers, and I appreciate everybody that worked on that project for three years because I imagine it was pretty taxing. Um, I'm coming into it a little bit late, but I still want to voice my opinion because I am Bahamian. My father was from Nassau, Bahamas. And um, I'm looking at this a little deeper than the statue because I'm looking at the individual people who actually worked that, put on those suits, went down there under harsh conditions mm -hmm. and made it through. And um, a lot of them spoke Greek. They come back and talk some of us. I don't know. Right, it, I believe you know, that's hey, what we, Stephen we found. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So um, my concern is, is, is I know that y'all put a lot of work into it, and I admire that. I really do. But one of the people that was from our community that said that they worked on that board, they said they weren't a part of the location. They, they only was part of choosing the artists. So they didn't have any input on where the actual uh, presentation would go. Now, um, my concern is it being in the back of that, the visitor center in that back parking lot near where um, the boats pull up and the people ha um, drink at the bar next door. And nobody's really going to go back in that area, especially in the evenings or after dark, because if, if I'm not mistaken, most of the shops close down around 6 um, in, in that location down there. So after 6, most of the people are doing dinner. They're walking down by, the by um, which I do. I, I visit Greek Town all the time myself. I eat in every one of those restaurants. And I am a tourist sometimes, too, because I enjoy going down there. But when you go down there, you have the, the for the um, restaurants and all the people that's walking along the street, they have those railings that people don't walk in the street. And I'm not sure, I've never seen the, um, the draft of the, the art project that, that's being talked about here, the size or the scale. I have but a I, present for you. Well, should I come and get it? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> These are three years' worth of records. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but my concern is going in the back. What I'm hearing here for today now is you, you, you're talking about more in the front of the visitor center. But one is saying not on the sidewalk, but I'm not sure what do you, what do you mean if it's not there. I thought you would have to adjust some things to make it visible because even after – the visitor center closed at, what, 3.30, 4 o'clock? How many people are going to be down on that end of the block to even visit that area? Because the only during the day, people are going to go in the visitor center. Yeah, they're going to walk through it because it's, the visitor center is open. But after 6 o'clock, nobody's going to be down there. And I'm concerned about the, um, I guess, the frustration of it all being, well, you don't, you don't want to reconsider nothing. You just want to say, this is it, we voted on it, and this is what we're going to do. But our community is looking at, looking at it a little, little different. We, we, these, these guys mean something to us. A lot of them buried in rural cemeteries. Some of them we grew up with, talked to them. And it, if, if they worked on the working dock, then why are they put it, being put at the back of the marina? I understand the working dock. I appreciate the fact that you can't get nothing else over there. The, that, that, that dock should be left alone. And I'm all, I'm all in agreement with that. But that tree across the street where that um, Mr. Pappas was saying, well, according to Tina, Mr. Pappas was saying, that what, why do you even have those planters there, like Nick was saying? Why not put it over there and put up one of the railings where they can be seen after people eat dinner? They all go to that plunge exchange and walk through there and blase, you know, Miranda through there. But nobody's going back up the street. So it's just like you're putting them back in the dark where please think about the location. It, it, it shouldn't be, I'm pretty sure he can, um, Stephen can give more ideas, hopefully, <laughs> where it doesn't take going back to square one. I don't think we should have to go back to square well, one. Well, unfortunately, legally we do. 
you know, as I said, you know, there are three years worth of, of work there, hard work and a lot of research. A lot of people put a lot of time into this project. And uh, the whole idea was to honor mm -hmm. that Afro-Bahamian community because so few people know that part of Tarpon Springs history. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful history. You know, the synergy and the cooperation between the Afro-Bahamians and the, and the Greeks and the Crackers is, is, you know, when Diane can vouch for this, when, when we put the call to artists out, we didn't think we were going to get any responses because our budget was so low. I have a very good friend in New York whose special, uh, her specialty is uh, African figural sculptures. And she's one of fine, five finalists at the moment for a project in Pittsburgh. And it's a half a million dollar project. She has a statue in Central Park. She's a very prominent sculptor. And I called her because I, I wanted to at least give her a shot at doing this. This goes way back when this first started. And she said, Joan, she said, I'm not going to look at that. She said, that's not enough money for me. So when we got 14 applications, right, Diane, we were actually surprised. And it's because of the message. We're not, we're not dissing anybody. We're not disrespecting anything. It's quite the opposite. You know, the way that Call to Artists was even put together, you know, attracted all of those artists. One of them did a 9-11 memorial in New York. One of them was from Spain. You know, we eliminated artists who, whose work is internationally known. This was not a fly-by-night thing. Yeah. You know, Stephen... And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying anything about well, the art. It, it's, I just want you to appreciate, and you'll see when you go through all those, those files, okay. this, I, was, I, this was the location was discussed. Okay. I'm getting two different locations right here standing here today. I'm getting two okay. different locations well, the, on one you're saying, Mr. Jones is saying up front, which I, I can go along with what he's saying, but in the commissioner's meeting there was a, a toss around about the trolley cr across the street. But sound like he's saying that one of the initial spots was up in front of the visitor center. That's which is right, fine. because when we when that, we conceived this when we conceived this project we had envisioned a figural type sculpture. Mm -hmm. That's not what we got. Stephen proposed an arch that incorporated all of these amazing images and stories. That's what we got because that's what we wanted and that's what honors the, these, this community of these people. You know, we could have, look, when you go down to the docks, there's a sponge diver statue, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Do you ever sit there and stare at the sponge diver statue? No. You walk past it. You see people, they, they show up, they take a selfie. Mm -hmm. I asked Tina, I said, do you know that there are plaques on the base honoring the, the, the donors? No. So, you know, it's not a contemplative piece. The, the, the pelican, the cat, they're not contemplative pieces. Stephen's piece is contemplative. You need to sit there and you need to absorb it and look at it and learn the story of these sponge hookers. Yeah. The, you can tell I have a passion for this. Yeah. yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. And the people that worked on it have a passion for it. This was not done lightly. And, you know, when we, you know, Stephen, um, Tony from Public Works, mm -hmm. and I think there were Brandon Crum, there were a few other people when we were down, uh, you know, in the location. And Stephen had, you know, uh, talked to them about putting it in the grassy median in front of the vis visitor center. All right? Right. Right, in the okay. front. Right, okay. Okay. Now, if you approach that Stephen's piece, if it was a statue, you would say, oh, look at that. There's a, there's a statue of a sponge hooker, okay? If you approach Stephen's and you decide you're going to stand there, and try to absorb everything that piece has to say. You'd be blocking parking spaces. You'd be creating a bottleneck for pedestrians. It's a trolley stop. It's noisy, people getting on and off the trolley with kids and Hubble Bubble and everything like that. It's, I, I guess what I'm saying is I almost want Stephen's piece to be a chapel 
you know, not something that's just plopped in the middle of the sidewalk that people are going to walk past, ignore, and say, oh, yeah, look at, look, look at that. Isn't that nice? And move on. And, oh, look, I took a selfie. You know, what does this mean? Why is this here? Mm -hmm. I want people to appreciate. I mean, the work this man has done to get the imagery collated. How long have you been working on this, Stephen? Well, well, well <clears throat> it was the anniversary of the meeting when I met. You took me to see Annie Dabbs, and that was a. I had started, but that was the first real immersion of a lot of imagery and stuff like that. So right. So for for a hundred for for a, a year. He's been working on just assembling the images for this because we want it to tell this amazing story. It's not slapdash. And the thing is, I'm, I'm a very visual person, and I think, you know, as I said, I obviously have a passion for this. You know, I've been to places around the world where I've gone to, you know, artwork in museums or on the street where I just want to sit there and look at it. That's what I want from this. I want it to be a stellar, emotional, moving, passionate piece about these amazing people. I don't want it to be a selfie op. Mm -hmm. You know, right. he spent a mm -hmm. year just trying to come up with, you know, the images he's going to use in this because we have a vision of the story we want to tell. And that's why I think, you know, even the call to artists resonated to the point where we got so many applications. Okay. Can I, may I ask you a question? Certainly. Okay. I appreciate everything you said, and, and, and I respect everything you said, and I agree with everything you said, except putting that exhibit in the back of that marina. Because who's going to go back there after the visitor center closed? And when everybody is down the street near the sponge exchange where everything is happening, if you, if you put it back there, who in the evening is going to even Miranda back there to sit around? Is that gate going to be locked? Is the bar going to be still active right there? Are people going to be still pulling up at a boat, a boat ramp back there? Is, is the marina going to sh take away the gate so every, the whole parking lot is open? So I respect everything you're saying, but I'm just saying, if you put it back at the back of that marina, marina, they, they didn't work at the marina. They worked at the, at the docks. We understand that nothing can be put on the dock side because that's a working dock. That's out. I agree totally. But it should not be put at the back of the marina when, when the visitor center closed. Nobody's up that way. If you, look, if you go back there any course of the day after 6 o'clock, it's nobody by the visitor center. Nobody's going to Miranda up there to sit around and, and look through this art exhibit. They, that's not going to, I can't see it happening. I but can. It, well, that's you. But <laughs> see, from, I've been through that. I, I, I drive through that just about every day. I've been watching this, I've been watching this for the last, what, since we've been coming to these meetings. I've been driving through there every day. I even went and stopped and then talked to the people at the visitor center. Nobody goes there because there's nothing to go there for. But in the evening time, when the visitor center closed, Who's going to go behind that, way in the back of that parking lot at night, next to a bar, next to water, and sit back there in, in Miranda? It's not going to happen because of the location. Mm -hmm. The location is a discredit to the, to the sponges right now. I agree with the front. I don't agree with the back. Because it, it eventually, okay, if you put it there, are you going to do a study to see how many people sign in to, go, to see this art exhibit back in the back? Are you going to do a survey? Are you going to do any kind of study to see how many people actually visit this, yeah. this beautiful piece of work in the, back of that, in the back of that by the bar? Are you going to, how are you going to adjust the parking lot? What, what did y'all, is this telling me that what y'all doing with the parking lot to show how, how everything is going to be scaled? Is that private property, the parking lot, no. owned by the bar? No, it's okay, city Okay, it's owned property. by the city. Uh -huh. So the city would take that, you would take that whole parking lot area. But, but my concern is, after the, the center, after the visitor center closed, if it's not on the front where you move the trolley down a few spaces, people can actually see it as they get off the trolley in the front. But once you cross that street, I, 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 I'm, I am Bahamian, and I'm not going to go back there in the back at night trying to see no, no monument back there because it's the art back there because you, can you even see it? Is it going to be lighting back there? Is it going to be security back there? And, uh, and again, are you going to track to see how many people actually visit that space in the back? I think it'll get more in the front. 
but that that's my concern. Okay, and, thank um, you. Can thank you. Comment? Sure, Biba. So, I, I mean, uh, the spending time and being able to absorb, uh, I hadn't thought thoroughly about, so I'm really glad that you brought up that point because I really think it's, it's an important point that on, you know, I originally, you know, I pointed out you, you weren't on our little walk, the sponge exchange thing as an idea, but you walk past that. There's no way to stop and look at all those images with all of the foot traffic. And I hadn't thought about that before, so I'm really, really glad that you pointed that out because it is something that needs time to really look at and see the history of. But what I think, you know, and I understand sort of theoretically and logistically what you're saying about it being sort of set back. But I think one of the beauties of this new, you know, placemaking uh, assessment that's going to happen and project with the city for that area is that, you know, that space could be something that is transformed into a more, into a place where people do go. It may not be right now, but this project, you know, that's beginning now for assessing how we can make areas in Greektown more of a place for people to go, I think is a great opportunity for that area to become one of those places. Mm -hmm. The city doesn't have a whole lot of empty areas at the moment where that elsewhere that could go, unfortunately. There may be in the near future, if we acquire Cokeris Park or that other, you know, piece of property down at the end, uh, Cokeris Park, because they're connected, you know, to, could be another interesting place to put something. Um, so maybe in the near future there will be more properties, and but that just drags it out longer is the issue. Um, but, but I agree with Joan in the sense that if you put it in a place where yes, theoretically, it's more prominent and you know we can say it's out front, are we gonna really understand the piece by just walking past it? Is anybody gonna get the information that's necessary from the piece if we can just, if all we can do is walk past it? So I just think maybe it's an opportunity if that is, you know, if it does go there, that that area be inspired by the piece and transformed into a place where people do go and spend time and look at the water. I don't know that there's that many other pieces of property out there. There isn't. With the space is the issue mm -hmm. at currently. If I could. Mm -hmm. Next, yeah. Wanna, um, you know, going with what Biba's saying, um, if the piece is gonna go, you know, back uh, to that original location uh, there in the marina, um, perhaps that becomes an anchor uh, for a lot more to go on there to enhance it, to make it someplace where I want to, where I want to go, right, you know, uh, but that is an anchor piece and, and I want to see, be it through landscape or a combination right. of all, through landscaping, lighting, and whatever, however you beautify and mm -hmm. create something really special in that area with that being the anchor to draw you in you know it's like why in other words create a spot where why wouldn't you want to go here and see this and, and all and uh, you know I can think at nighttime especially if you do something I've talked about lighting before mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. but if you do something uh, with the proper lighting and again landscaping and the things where that becomes a focal point uh, what I envision was something maybe if you do it right that pops out at you, uh, you know, at night where you can't really, you know, where you are aware of it. If you drive, you're going to look over, you know, just through the lighting and things of what's there. So, I mean, that's a possibility. Uh, I mean, but I'm, you know, like Katie, you know, I think mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the, if, if if I could just be the guy that decides everything, <laughs> which I'm not, it would go over, you know, in front of this exchange there, you know, and stuff. But you know, you run into the issue, you know, of, you know, the the contemplation piece of it, uh, and, and all. Is it just something you're going to walk past, or is it something that you're going to be drawn to, you know, and <clears throat> and, and uh, do it? Um, do it justice, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think the lighting and landscaping is going to be a very important component. component of this. And I think it's our job, if something gets put back there, to drive interest back there yeah. to make it 
so make it so that people know it's there. So they can enhance and create, you know, besides the art of And a, it could be a really area. nice new yeah. place for people to, to sit and hang out and enjoy the river that hasn't been done before. Would there be a sign in? Will you be able to take a survey to see how There isn't on any piece of art, no, public no. art. That doesn't happen anywhere. No, I'm just... Back, it's at night, so... At night, there's not a whole lot of people down there in the first place. They're down at the Sponge Exchange, that's what I'm trying to say. They're not there, but the park, parking lot. They're, they're, there. they're not anywhere at the <laughs> docks at night. Yeah, okay, and everything it closes tends to yeah. clear out. Uh, <laughs> really, there aren't people walking around at night at the docks so. to see anything anywhere. So that's kind of, a you know, during the day is when you have the traffic. Right. Mm -hmm. Can I, I, w I wish there was another spot that the city owned to put it on. They say it was five other spaces. So what are the other spaces? Oh, I don't know. I'm not aware of those. five other spaces. I'm not aware of those. Mm -hmm. Stephen, yeah. you're mm -hmm. chomping at the bit there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I really appreciate all the uh, the input and the feedback here. We're actually getting into the the the, the nuts and bolts and the the, the kind of subtleties that you actually need to think about. Mm -hmm. it, it's really true. Um, there's a lot of good points here, and um, you know even some of the things that like seem like to thrown me. Or maybe sort of look, go out the box and look all around because I was actually afraid that we might lose the site altogether. I didn't know that's kind of what that initiated my looking around. So in the report that I sent, um, basically I tried to outline the things I learned. Some of those things affirm what you're kind of already doing or on the way to doing, and other things are sort of cataloging because I wanted something good to come out of each thing. Um, but as I my sort of latest thoughts about this current location is that. Um, and some of this, see, what it's forced is I forced to go keep going back down to the site, keep talking, keep looking, and also keep going back to the art. <laughs> and one of these things, this gets at what are these, some of these last few comments is, is that it is actually amazing, you know, when you start to do something creative, where it will go, and you, and you have, a, like an artist, but it's also as a collective, of whoever's working on something, you start something, and then it goes somewhere, that maybe you only started to imagine. And so I actually tried to say this a couple of board meetings. Uh, oh, maybe they didn't say that well, but I was trying to tell the commissioners, it says, like, you know, look at how to think about that spot as something that, like, you know, if you were having an esplanade, man, that would be like prime real estate right at the top, right at the beginning of it. If you're planning, that's for, that's for my planning eyes. Now, granted, it takes a little bit of imagination because of the way it is now. And I've gone back and thought how e even the businesses, how they are, They've got something to gain if, in that assessment, I'm glad I finally know the name of it, <laughs> that assessment hopefully will address some of that because I know there was pushback in the past about the whole waterfront development and gentrification. It's probably the legitimate arguments. But the truth is those businesses have a front street. They've also got potential in the back. Why not? Shouldn't they have it all? And then more people benefit. So maybe even, maybe even some of that congestion you get sometimes along the main street will be dispersed, spread out. But in any case, not to digress. Um, uh, so in terms of this location, one thing that came out early when that site was moved, and I have to kind of give Public Works a little bit of credit in retrospect because, well, as, as much as I imagine that piece there, right at the front, right, because visibility was number one, right, because you want to get you want the story, and then you want the link to Union Academy. So boom, what's the right between the eyes? You try to, but there is something to be said for the content, contemplative piece, especially when you get down when you've got more crowded sidewalks. And however, I'm torn. I know that wanting it someplace that really just bullseye on the historical significance. So here's where the art kind of comes in a little bit. In terms of this piece, it's sitting on it's sitting on the water. It has a room to breathe. It has that. I remember when I visited uh, Nicholas's shop, um, and, and Tina actually set that up, <laughs> introduced me, and we looked at the place where there was baptism. Some of these early African Americans, Bahamian people were, you know, they were baptizing down there. That's really close by the spot. As a matter of fact, when I went back, the, some of the images on that side facing that up uh, uh, east on the river address that. So I'm like, ah, oh, you know. So again, some of these answers come in the art, and um, there are some logistical, technical things that I laid out in terms of just the distance. How do I do that? Like, I had this, okay, how do you something like, okay, this isn't something that is, first of all, from a distance, it's colorful, so it's going to draw you. 
Then you're going to see at this top of this archway these hands, and they're African American hands or African hands or Bahamian hands. So bam, that's is, that's when it's supposed to click that you get that there's something about people of color here. It's not a big sign that says something, but it's something that draws you in, and then then like you keep looking, and there's layers. And and what's neat about this kind of it's kind of a new way to use this material. It's almost collaging, and you have these adjacencies and cool things, beautiful things kind of come up in the process. And I'm able to illustrate without having to write. For instance, I learned that John Cheney actually funded an Afri a church which then just was pastored by an African American. Interesting because I already knew that the African American Bahamian community helped build the scaffolding, erect the dome on the. So I've actually got that essentially in a silent narrative, which can be written up when you go to your QR code. These are the kind of things that are like, wow, you know? Mm -hmm. so, um, so anyway, we had some logistical issues of distance. The wayfinding piece was a way to help solve that. So I went back on my latest round and I said, you know what? I can't have something that looks like another sculpture. Like this. I want people to know where the sculpture is, right? I, but it's got to welcome people. So I've some, got something now that really, it really connects with that. Oh, it's almost like the, the void. It's almost that shape. It's just that, it's that shape. So it was a direct relation visually, even at that distance. And there's a person. His name was Alex um, Smalls. He was an employee of the city, and he was a sponger. It's a beautiful image. So here's this tall guy with imagery. There's a, I can show you. I have, you know, is there right to greet? So, so there's a lot of different ways to look at this. Being in front of the visitor center itself actually is a problem in a location. As much as there's some aesthetic things I would love to do otherwise around there, being on the docks actually is a prominent location from a different place. Now the thing now, and I just want to differentiate because I want to address her concern, which I share that concern. Um, so when I mentioned the baptisms and stuff like that, there's also references to like Bailey's Island and the Anclote River and places in the you know rock, where were they sponged. So there was this earlier generation which was more dispersed before the docks really built up. A lot of these people who I know the names of, we know the names of, who are buried in Rose Cemetery, and who are more contemporary. Those are the people who were more integrated in the current, including at that exchange. So I thought about this and I said, hmm. And you know I mulled. I mulled all the way up and down the street. Um, and the benefit of doing that is, um, is I see our opportunities. One of them is, is this. And it's not directly public art, but, um, but part of her concern helped me keep pushing me to look. As I assess that, when you go look at the exchange, there's the gateway, there's the palm trees, which, you know, very likely they may go away and nothing may be replaced. I don't, there's no guarantee, right? So I'm listening to everything and realizing all the concerns, but also trying to balance with the concerns of this historical connection there. So um, then you've got a monument to John Cheney, appropriately placed there. There's a stone uh, there. On the other side, where I had started to be looked was my last rendition, starting to look at that area where a planter was. I almost eliminated an art box. That spawned an idea as because it was like, oh, low-hanging fruit. If we put in images related, again, I'm not making a decision for you. <laughs> I'm just saying it real. I realized if I had to do something as an artist, and I already have images in mind if you want to use them, there's a place to do it. There's no technical issues, no logistical, no traffic issues, no, and it's basically the, the purview. But here's my, this is the, 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 this really addresses even more closely her concern, my concern about the, 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 the exchange is that um, right opposite the Cheney Monument, there's also a grassy area. Tina and I talked about this stuff as I was jockeying around. And I realized that uh, by simply moving a plant, something could be put there. Now, I'm not talking about art necessarily. But, and I'll just throw this out there. What I learned about the working waterfront, one, there's not only all the issues of the logistics, but there's a very strong argument about the historic nature of it. And that historic nature is also the backbone of when you want write grants and things. That was something I, you know, went for, for whatever, including monuments or whatever. So Rose Cemetery is a similar place. I could see them partnering on something that actually connects those two places and places all those names of all those people, because I'm not going to have them in my sculpture. I may be able to reference them on a website, on, on my new QR card, but I can't now put all of those in names. There's kind of, it's kind of more visual. But there's a way, I, 
it would incor it would basically involve those two entities perhaps partnering with the sponge exchange right off the sidewalk. John Cheney here, the African Bahamian spongers here. That's just an idea that I came up with this morning. Stephen, that's so any, a project for another I day. I know. It's right a, now, we're, we're trying I'm to just... It's not in our project. I'm just saying a way to resolve the connection. And here's the thing. When we talk about walking tours and all those other things, you can cross-reference. So you've got people who will now understand, I've got this thing, and I've got this thing to visit. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, the, you know, the, the mm -hmm. thing is, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. there's a project that was submitted, approved, and in contract. So if you two want to talk about any, you know, changes or any reconsiderations or anything, as I said, you're more than welcome to do it, but any changes to what's, you know, already been uh, approved is going to, you know, open a can of worms. You're going to have to renegotiate your contract and do a bunch of other things that will just put all of this on hold for quite a while. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to, you know, just leave you two to discuss it. And maybe we'll just put everything on hold for a month and just wait and see what, you know, you both come back with. And if you decide to leave it as it is, we'll just proceed. And if not, well, we, we've got to renegotiate everything. So. Yeah, I'm not sure it's going to survive. Um, OK. Know. Uh, Diane, do you have any announcements? No, I said what I need to. Okay. Uh, it's 3.06, and uh, the meeting is adjourned. Our next meeting is Wednesday, June 14th, Flag Day, at 2 p.m. here in the second floor media room. Thank you all for your interest.